Hello and welcome back to the Digital Elf and Wearables series. I'm truly excited to have another magnificent guest for you. But before I go ahead, I'd like to remind our viewers to subscribe. And also now our listeners, we are also on podcasts now on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Please share the word. And also I'd like to acknowledge our global partners and sponsors, Spirit Digital. Uh, check them out. But I'm truly excited to have another magnificent guest for you. And today we have Casey Kaltlin. She is a Vice President of Strategic Growth and Marketing at Premier. Casey, how are you? I'm so good. Thank you so much for having me. We're worlds apart, but it's so good to be connected. Oh, brilliant. I'm really glad that we are here. Nice to meet you. And I follow all your nice insights on Twitter. I know we follow each other, so uh, great to have you. It's, it's great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. And I follow you too. I love your wearables insight and it goes even beyond that so love being connected brilliant and uh, Casey without further ado I have a first question for us and uh, what do you think is missing in healthcare so there's so much going on um, right now and I think I would be remiss not to just recognize the speed of innovation and um, tech adoption during the pandemic um, we should celebrate that, right? So I have to celebrate that before I go into what's missing. But um, in terms of what I I really think we're we're lacking, um, I'll start with the pandemic first. Um, you know, we really struggled to understand what was going on in communities early. I really truly believe we need a a national syndromic surveillance system. Um, to predict symptomatically what's happening in communities and really better prepare for something like a pandemic, right? We could have swim, swam a lot upstream um, and listened to some of the data coming in and um, better prepared our hospitals and health systems and communities. So I'd say that's one thing that's missing from a tech perspective. Um, the other thing that I'd say is uh, as I'm sure you know, um, in the US, up to 30% of healthcare spending is way, um, which is kind of mind blowing, right? And that, um, you know, of that, a lot of that waste is administrative waste. Um, and just by applying AI and automation to many of the, of the aspects of healthcare from purchasing to making payments to the actual care delivery process, I think we could make some really dramatic improvements. And, um, you know, I'm really big on doing so without contributing to provider burnout. Um, as you know, we read a lot about this from, from a care delivery standpoint. And there's something like 20 million research articles published a year in journals, which is insane. So no human being can reasonably absorb all this evidence and incorporate it into their workflow. So supporting clinicians with evidence-based care in their workflow, I believe is also missing and essential to ensuring um, that that care is delivered to the right patient at the right time. Oh, fantastic. It's so much to consider there. You mentioned administrative waste, which I mean is a problem globally in here in UK, but also all over Europe uh, processes and and resources are lost, so huge numbers. Uh, thanks for your answer. Moving on and going Absolutely. to the second question, we talk about data in healthcare very often, as you know, but what are the repercussions of having too much unstructured data? It's a great, awesome question. Um, and, and you're the wearables expert, so <laughs> I'm sure you know how many widgets um, the health tech community is introducing to consumers every day. Um, it's insane. Innovation is at rapid speed. Um, but on top of that entire data load, we already have in healthcare these siloed systems and, and data that, that really challenges providers to integrate and find sort of what I call next step intelligence. What should I do next with this data that is measuring you know, both my performance and, and the quality of care that I'm delivering um, to patients. So I think that um, 
you know, an example of that, I guess I would say going back to the syndromic surveillance system that I manage uh, or that I previously mentioned, um, what that is doing and Premier has the capability to do that as I'm sure other tech companies perhaps have built, but essentially what that's doing is making sense of physicians notes in the EMR that are unstructured. It's free text. And so um, I really think our ability as health tech vendors to enable providers with next step intelligence using natural language processing and machine learning to find these patterns in systems that alert communities and alert providers of, in this case, for the, with this example, a rise in symptoms that could signal a pandemic. Um, the other ways that we're using natural language processing include um, in the life sciences industry. So, um, you know, really aggregating this data, collecting this data, using it for research, and also using it to identify patients for clinical trials um, based on the ability to see across the entire journey of the patient. And when you are in the stage of needing patients for a trial, quickly identifying them. Oh, brilliant. Thank you so much. I mean, you mentioned natural processing uh, technology. They're very, very innovative. But also, as you mentioned, the, the real value is in the insights. And we talk about data. And sometimes the clinicians, as you know, don't want too much data or more data in this case. So really, really great that your technology also addresses these, I mean, these challenges. Fantastic. Uh, the third and last question for you is, what tools and technologies are most needed to help consumers taking control of the health right now? So again, I'll leave the consumer-centric technology up to you. You're the expert. Um, our, at Premier, our customers and our consumers are healthcare providers. Um, and I already threw so much at you, so I'll just kind of recap some of the technology that I mentioned. Um, one is a national... Um, or international for that matter, <laughs> um, syndromic surveillance system that allows us to interpret what's going on in physician notes using more sophisticated data science and actually surface that insight to communities to understand that, um, you know, a pandemic may be on the horizon, for example. Um, I also think that providers should be looking to health tech providers or health tech vendors like Premier for the basics. Let's get rid of that waste. Let's automate and AI enable processes so that they can all operate at the top of their license and so that we can remove some of the administrative burden from care delivery. And then last, I would just say thematically, we're swimming in data. And as consumers really um, get more and more tech savvy, that will only expand. And so I think we really have an opportunity and a challenge to make as much sense and use of that data as possible. Like I said, using natural language processing, machine learning, AI, to turn that unstructured data into truly next step intelligence. Oh, brilliant. Uh, thank you, Casey. And you mentioned we swimming in data. Uh, that reminds me of my, my third guest, uh, Nick Attings gave a similar quote about we swimming in data all the time because it just coming at us. So fantastic. Uh, just to uh, recap, uh, it seems that we have a very robust capability and system there with Premier. And uh, sometimes, I mean, technologies add more complex complexity, you know, and it seems that you have a very effective uh, technology going on. That's fantastic because really the health tech providers need, need to rely on on very effective systems and, and technology to move to move things forward. So very, very good. And we're coming to the end of the episode. Uh, it was nice and short and, and really sharp. I appreciate your insights. I follow your work. You know, you you are fantastic, by the way. Um, and Casey, I finish all my episodes. It's not really a question. Is one minute of fame. Okay. So you, okay. Can mention, you can mention anything. You can mention your work related. You can mention colleagues. You can mention family. You can mention a personal achievement. Anything whatsoever. So over to you one minute of fun to round up one minute of fun holy moly i feel fun. like i'm having fun 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 fame oh fame <laughs> i thought yeah. you said fun i was like it's similar it's similar. Fun. <laughs> it's similar i mean 
mean, I would just say, follow me on Twitter at Casey Calpin. Um, we're engaged. I'm engaged with your followers. I am a digital health enthusiast um, and really am very aligned with the mission of my organization, which is transforming the health of communities. So let's engage, let's talk, let's innovate together. Um, and I've had so much fun. So thank you so much for having me on. I hope we can stay connected. Oh, brilliant. Casey, thank you for your time, for your, your insights and for your expertise. Awesome. Thank you so much. I hope we chat again soon. Brilliant. So to round up, thanks to our viewers and listeners. Make sure you subscribe and share with your communities in healthcare. And I'll see you next time.